It's betting weekly game bet match. It's the number one tennis betting podcast and YouTube show with me, Nigel C D, your host, and our senior ATP tour handicapper, Sean Calvert, brought to you in association with Bet Rivers, your hometown sportsbook. Uh, Sean, how's your day? Let me tell you, before we go about your day, I, I just want to <laughs> say about mine, if that's all right. I, you know, I've just, you know, been Good, a nice walk along the promenade here in Nice. Got a lovely little Uber up to this beautiful little castle. Uh, had a couple of glasses of vino with the most outrageous view, looking over Monaco to the left. Uh, Villefranche de Mer on the right. Uh, is it Ferry uh, Ferry Saint Chap or something? You'll know better than me. I've uh, not been that area, so I don't know to be honest. Well, Sean, honestly, the wine was delightful. The beer was cold. The prices weren't too bad. Um, how should they be? Do you uh, do you want me to go into this, or should we just skip straight for the tennis? Well. No, I just wanted to just set it up to see if you wanted to comment on your day. Anyway, I've, you... I've not had a greatest of days. I had, to, I had to attempt to lift a 73-year-old woman off the floor at about 8 o'clock this morning. That's what drinking, that's what drinking does that early. Uh, she doesn't drink. Now, Natasha's mum's not well. She fell, she fell, she falls over all the time. She fell over again. There's no chance me and Natasha were getting her up. Absolutely no chance. So we had to get the ambulance out for that. That was about 8 oh. o'clock. Then I had to come back and get Lagan ready for his his um, his um uh, football club and do his packed lunch and all that sort of stuff. And then it was obviously onto the tennis, which wasn't which wasn't a great day uh, by any means. Now I've got one of Lagan's little friends and Lagan in the house playing Fortnite, causing chaos. I've had to do some food for them. I had to go and get his switch. So they're playing with two switches. There's all sorts going on here. And it's, it's half term. It's chaos. And the tennis isn't going very well. Apart from that, I've had a great day. A yeah, great day. But you're away soon. When's the next trip for you? Uh, Madrid, a couple of weeks. Oh, there you go. So the nice sunshine's going to be very, very hot over yeah, there. It better Madrid. be warm. That's all yeah, I can you'll, say. You'll be, you'll be fine. I mean, the, the light looks like I've been on a, a two-week all-inclusive in the south of Spain, but it's not. It, it's the light here. I, Hotel I can assure lighting. you. Uh, yeah, it's I, bad. Hotel lighting. This isn't too bad, actually. You, you look all right. They're, some of the Thank ones you. I've been been doing, with it, where they don't have any lights. That one in Indian Wells, there was no lights in the room. There was just lamps. So it looked like I was in sort of some sort of Transylvanian castle or something it's ridiculous, but anyway, yeah, I mean, we're just we're just going to sort of talk about the elephant in the room. You touched on it there about the tennis results so far. We're having a bit of a bad run on the start of the clay court season, and obviously, joking aside, you know, out here, I'm out here for the tennis tomorrow, which I'm going to in Monte Carlo, and I'm going there as well a little bit later in the week. But um, the results haven't been great, and we've spoken about these before when results don't go your way. A lot of people might have come on new to this podcast. We've been doing this now for two and a half years. We've had stages in 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 these these shows where we we can't basically tip trash you know? and then times we can go on a, a great run and, and we and we can't get it wrong um a lot of people have sort of made comments about some of the tips and they some I, I just said judged by a few a couple of comments people are you know wanting in desperate to try to get a winning wager which that, that which happens when you when you bet and obviously you've got to remember to gamble responsibly and obviously keep your stakes uh to the, what you you can afford to lose but uh just want to go back to that thing, you know, we, we were so unlucky again today, which will come on to the reasoning why, but if, if, when they're not, if you're going for a bad run, how do you deal with those kind of things, which are inevitable when you're, when you're doing the, the amount of bets that we do over a tennis season? How do you deal with it and what advice you would give to anybody who was, who's, who's doing this run at the moment thinking, where's the next winner going to come from? I don't, I don't subscribe to this view. I know a lot of people do, but a lot of people, I don't get this, I must have a winner at any price kind of mentality. Loads of people do it. Um, a friend of a friend of mine will is is his betting is, is insane. He'll, he'll be betting at one to 50 shots like uh, it, with two minutes to go in a football match and stuff like that. And then somebody scores and he loses his money because he's desperate to get a winner at any price. That that doesn't work in the long run. Certainly not for me. You know, you, when you are betting the, the bets I bet, which is value plays, you, you have to bet at the value price. They're not always going to win. You can do all the research you like. And ultimately, if if a bet is value, then it's, it's, a, it's a bet. If it's not value, then it's not a bet. There are going to be times particularly in tournaments like Monte Carlo. I mentioned before about Monte Carlo. It's very, very poor for underdog winners, generally 25, 26, 27% on average. So this tournament, it's not a surprise to me that this tournament is not providing many underdog winners or value winners. Even today, there's been very few. It's all winning favorites, all winning pretty easily. If you want to, if you, if you don't need me to tell you, to tell people that, uh, you know, one to 25 shot is probably going to win. That's not what, you know, I'm all about. I don't. I just try for the value. If it's there, it's there. If you get a losing run, you know, reduce the stakes. Um, don't, don't, don't try and chase it. That's the first thing not to do. Definitely, don't do that. Ultimately, you have to realise that there are peaks and a lot of peaks and troughs over a very long tennis season. So it's, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not great when it happens. It's, it's disappointing, frustrating, and annoying. But it, it is always going to happen. So there's nothing we can do about it. 
Yeah, I think that's one of the very important thing you said there. You know, you've got to manage your expectations, manage your bank balance, your banks, you know, your betting bank, make sure you gamble responsibly. They're the three key parts that I would always say. And also, okay, we're not having a great run. We're not, you know, we're hitting the form, but we'll come on to the movements today. But we're only 4.65 units down on this podcast, which is nothing really. So just keep the faith, keep the bet small. Uh, we will go on a run, we will go on a burner. Statistically, in the clay court season, it's always very start hard from the adjustment from from hard court into the clay. It's a hard time, so just uh, maybe keep your stakes a little bit smaller than usual, and then obviously when you build up a little bit of bank, go again. But I think it's important that we mention that because you know we are on a bit of a bad run today. For example, I mean we we took the plus one forty yesterday on Serendulu. Uh, I think Bet Rivers went off at plus one one point one zero. Won the first set, second set five nil down, come back to five four points to make it five five, and then. Fizzles out in the final set. That is the kind of thing that's happening for yeah. us at the moment. Some of the shot choices again. I mean, I watched my, pretty much all of that match, and you know, it's a match he should have won. He was he, he's gone from two point four to one point three seven in play. Um, so totally took his foot off the gas in the second set. Then remembered remembered what he was supposed to be doing, and then gave it all away with some absolutely bizarre shot choices. And then a double fault at the end of the second set, and the, again he had chances again in the third set. Didn't take them. Um, you know that that that's how that's how it's been going, and um, that that will happen in tennis. Whoever you are, it's going to happen at some point. It just feels that way at the moment. Just we haven't got that bit of luck. We're going to get one over the line at a big price. We're going to get a tournament winner coming up very soon, and then, like I say, we'll go on a burner. It happens every season. And my advice to anybody is just be sensible with your wagering. Don't go chasing, and just make sure that you gamble responsibly. And to, we will win together. That's the motto. Anyway, that's yesterday. That, you know, the yesterday's gone. There's nothing we can do about it. It's always about tomorrow. Looking ahead to the future, and tomorrow we have a full card, a really, really good card, and. It's quite. It's the best card of the day of the of the of the tournament so far. Obviously, with the last sixteen, it's some really great matchups. So I'm very fortunate to be uh, on the main court tomorrow for this one. Before we go on to it, how much do you reckon uh, two tickets cost me face value tomorrow on the uh, the main court in Monte Carlo? What do you reckon? Uh, you got good seats or sort of media? Yeah, good one? seats, really good seats. Two tickets for me and Paula. Probably about three hundred euros each. Yeah, there were 475 euros with, with without the booking charge. Last week at Estoril, 25 euros for the day session and the evening session. Oh, yeah, Estoril's always cheap. Yeah. Monte, you're in Monte Carlo, though. This is why I don't go there. <laughs> it's it's yeah, one yeah. of the reasons I don't go there. It's too expensive, too crowded. No, nah, not for me. Well, it's a busy day, and uh, we're going to kick off with arguably the best match of the day. It's now about Djokovic, uh, who myself and Sean considered a bit of a fade in the tournament, but he... He'd rolled back some years with a vintage display against Safadin. Not quite sure about Safadin's performance, but obviously Novak Djokovic did what he had to do and won very well. He's up against Lorenzo Masetti. He was one of our leans to win the tournament at the start. It's opened up for the top half of the draw with the uh, the withdrawal from Carlos Alcaraz. Uh, Novak Djokovic is minus 480 to win this match. Masetti is plus 350 with Bet Rivers. The spread here is four and a half, minus 122. Uh, for Djokovic giving up the four and a half, minus 104 for Mazzetti, who was our pick last week in S3 and should have done a lot better. A 21 and a half is the total. Over is even money and that minus 127. It's a repeat of this exact same match this time last year. And we were on the exact same court this time last year while I was watching this match again when Mazzetti won. He had a huge support that day. Incredible support. You know, it started off with uh, everyone rooting for Djokovic and then very quickly turned for Mazzetti in the second set and the third set. You knew he was going to win. Uh, he was a very heavy favourite for that though, uh, Djokovic. So minus, about, about minus seven dollars. Uh, Mazzetti was plus 550. And but now they're almost half that price. Uh, in the head's head, it's 3-1 to Djokovic uh, and you know, the three wins, there was that famous match at the French Open where Rossetti led two sets to love and then Djokovic came back and uh, Rossetti had to retire in the fifth. But all the other matches on hard courts and, and uh, have gone in the favour of the Serbian pretty reasonably. But on clay, uh, Mazzetti's been more than a match and beaten him. Probably should have beaten him the two times they played. Um, how do you see this one going? And really, I mean, we both said that we thought Djokovic was a fade for the tournament. Mm -hmm. What do you make of his first round uh, win? And, you know, is that because of Safflin's performance or, or probably did we underestimate, at our cost, underestimated uh, the, the, in, in the world number one? Well, it was the best performance he's done on clay for a first match on clay for many, many years. I mean, every single year that for the last, all, I want to say about five or six years, maybe, maybe, maybe more, uh, he's always struggled in his opening match on clay. His, his opponents haven't, generally had to be that good like Dan Evans Davidovich Fakina these guys have beaten him here at this tournament Vesely's beaten him at this tournament 
Saffling had a, had a nightmare. I mean, he, he couldn't buy a first serve and then he was just hitting far too many unforced errors. I know his game isn't 100% suited to clay, but neither is Dan Evans, really. And he, he still managed to beat Djokovic. It, that, that wager, that sort of interest was about Djokovic pretty much always being rusty, very, very rusty in his first clay match of the year. And even he would have thought even more so this year after his poor performances um, earlier on in the year, well, maybe not poor, but you know, losing to Luca Nardi, you would you wouldn't expect that. Um, you know, Australian Open as well wasn't fabulous for him. He certainly struggled at times there. So I would I would have expected him to be um, struggling in, in his first match. Safflin didn't give him, as I say, didn't really give him a test. But Djokovic did look way way better than any of his opening clay matches in in the last numerous years. Um, so this that that, that makes it difficult. I mean, going back. 12 months when Massetti and Djokovic played in this round last year, Djokovic was quite clearly struggling. Um, Massetti managed to get the better of him that day, uh, priced up around about plus plus 500. Now he's about, what, plus 350? Mm. I'm just wondering if that, if that value is there because last year Djokovic was certainly struggling. This time around, he doesn't seem to be. Certainly played with a lot more confidence against Safler than he has in his, his, his other openers. Um, looking at the stats of last year, Massetti won 13% more second serve points against what was, as I said, a rusty um, Novak Djokovic. As you said, Massetti won the first two sets at the French Open, then completely ran out of gas, didn't he? Had nothing left, ended up retiring in the end. Um, looking at the last 12 months, clay stats at main level, you know, Djokovic's stats are, as you'd expect, pretty good. Service points won and return points won a total of 111 and a service hold and break total of 117. Massetti, very good as well, not quite as good. 105 on his service points, one and return points, one total. And his service hold and break total is 112. So, and Djokovic is just 3% three, 3 better on service points, one and on return points, one. So not a, not a huge chasm. That's that's why this price isn't, isn't as big as I'd want it to be, really. I, I want to get involved with Massetti somehow. Um, as I said at the start of the tournament, we, we couldn't, tip him as an outright could we because he was playing on the day that w the show was going out wasn't it so we couldn't we didn't have any markets and so we couldn't we couldn't really do that but I'm interested in Massetti I think plus one and a half sets is perhaps the way to go if you're having a bet on this match I think that's around about plus one one seven uh plus money shot 2.17 with bet rivers I feel like Massetti's gonna be competitive the overs is also interesting I, I can't see Djokovic winning this in two easy straight sets so I feel Massetti in some way I'm just not feeling the value I really like the over 21 and a half here. Um, it's even money. I'm yeah. surprised it's not the favourite. I thought over 21 and a half would be the favourite and the under would be the uh, the underdog. But it's not. It's uh, The favourite is the under at minus 127. I agree with you. I think Massetti. And the one thing I will say is that, you know, Djokovic is, is love wherever he goes. Uh, the Italian crowd he will get behind Massetti like you've never, you've never seen. And if he keeps it competitive and it goes into a tight second or third set, they'll get him over the line like they did last year. Um, so I think it's really a fascinating watch. You know, everyone's sort of writing off Djokovic's tournament. Everyone's writing him off for the French Open. He's been written off many times in his career before and he's bounced back and he's shown what his willpower and determination is. And this young kid has got all the talent in the world, but sometimes doesn't deliver. So uh, on the big stage, but I, I like you, I, I like the over 21 and a half is. So are we going with a, an official play or are we just going to go with a lean for those two wages? Yeah, it's just a lean because I'm, I'm just not, not sure it's, Fabulous value. I mean, as I said, he was much bigger in price last year against a Djokovic that was really struggling for form. Now he's a shorter price against a Djokovic. It doesn't look like he's struggling as much as he had, anywhere near as much as he has in years gone by. So maybe not just the, be the best of value. Maybe I'm just being greedy, but um, yeah, lean for me on Massetti plus one and I've sets all the overs, which those sort of yeah. bets are, are where I'm going in this particular match. I think the professional hunters out there and the gamblers out there are all of the opinion they want to fade Djokovic. You know, you look at many podcasts, many, many experts on, on social media, they're all giving Djokovic a, a negative here. And this is the line that's been priced up, knowing that Massetti is going to be a popular play with the public and they're probably trying to keep him, get keep a little bit of extra juice for them uh, rather than you take an inflated price. So the market does like Massetti here. He's plus 350. Uh, if you haven't got a bet in before the match, there may be a bet in play and I'll be uh, uh, live on the Because We Win Instagram account tomorrow courtside for this match. If there's anything that uh, I believe is value after set number one, 
I'll be posting it live on the Instagram account. Remember, head across the Bet Rivers, uh, 38 different markets available last I looked on this match and probably more added tomorrow. You will not get a better array of tennis betting markets than Bet Rivers. But remember, it's an early start, 5 a.m. Eastern time, 11 o'clock local time. We do not know the order of play. I can imagine Djokovic and Massetti may be third match on court or fourth match on court. But it will be early. So if you are going to have a wager, head across to Bet Rivers. And if you do place a bet with Bet Rivers, you'll be able to bet live and watch live. You'll be able to watch the match on from the comfort of your own home on your tablet, uh, whichever device you want to watch it on. Okay, next match is an all Aussie affair. Alex Diminuar against Alexi Popperin. Uh, one thing I will say, Sean, before we go into it, the weather, the weather looks really fair tomorrow, doesn't it? As well, as it does. Weather. Yeah, no, that's yeah. another important factor. We did have the threat of rain today; it didn't materialise. But now for the rest of the tour, it's going to be hot. Uh, does that have an effect on anything? Any way of thinking for your stuff this for tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, it's it should play a little bit quick. It's still only going to be about nineteen or twenty degrees. Um, not not massively hot, but I would suggest it would play slightly quicker potentially than than in the last couple of days. Yeah, not not massively. It's still relatively slow conditions. Um, if we get quite a lot of sun in that twenty degrees, then obviously it would make it slightly quicker. Maybe during the day, the evening matches are still going to be pretty slow. It might have an, uh, no effect on the conditions. It's said that my face will be as red as the clay. I can assure you that if, uh, if 21 degrees is, is me in trouble. Uh, so let's move. Uh, Sean, honestly. Factor 50 and in 20 degrees, you'd be fine, wouldn't you? Factor you, 30? 50, I, I'm a 50, 50 man. 50 man oh, yeah. on my head, 30 on my face, uh, 25 on any, any part of my body. But I've got to cover up. And uh, yeah, so we'll see tomorrow. You'll see tomorrow. You'll see tomorrow. I'll put some pictures up. I'll be as. Red as you, 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 you won't believe it. the clay of the clay in the Monaco will not look as uh, red as my face. I can assure you, <laughs> twenty degrees. Okay, let's move on to this all, all Aussie affair. Alex Dominion up against Alexi Popperin. Uh, both players are playing very well at the moment. Uh, Alexi Dominion, Alex Dominion, just outside the top ten in the world in eleventh, and uh, Alexi Popperin is rolling back the years with some really good displays. Um, he's won the last two matches against Mute, and he knocked out the defending champion Rublev uh, earlier on today. Uh, Marinka and Grigspor. Have uh, Diminuar has got past the reach stage. I always like to fade players though when they have a big win. Uh, and Alexi Popperin has just beaten the defending champion. Uh, if you look at the money line, uh, no surprise, Diminuar is the favourite, minus 350. Alexi Popperin is plus 250. The spread is three and a half, minus one, three and a half for Diminuar is minus 137. Popperin plus three and a half is even money. And the total here is 21 and a half with over. Minus 125, under minus 110. They've met twice before, never on clay. Both easy wins for each player. In Brisbane, back in 2019, Dominion won 6262. And in the Paris Masters, Popper in game revenge with a 6 love, 6 3 win over his countrymen. Um, I like to fade players after a big win. Popper just had a, his biggest ever performance on uh, on clay with the win over Rublev. Probably Rublev didn't play well at all, though, but. Um, do you, do, you, do you go with that theory or do you think Popperin is, is, is giving up some good numbers on this, on the slower stuff? Usually I, I, I respect the theory. Yeah. But th these prices, it, it's, I can't be having this Diminor at one to three to win this match. It's outrageous. Um, on, on a slow clay court against an opponent who's in peak form and has better clay data. Um, we've got, we've got Diminor at one to three. I mean, Diminor talked the other day about the fact that the slow conditions here don't suit him. You know, we know that he didn't really need to say that, but he, he mentioned it anyway. Uh, and in general, his clay stats don't warrant him being this, anywhere near this short, really. Look at the last 12 months on this surface at main level. Diminor, just a 50% win rate. And the service points won and return points won a total of 102. Popper in 69% win rate and a total of 103. So if you just go in on those bare stats, you, you can't have Diminor at one to three. Popper winning more second serve points. Um, in that time frame on this surface as well, 54% compared to 51%. And he's held serve 87% of the time on the clay in the last 12 months at main level, which is outstanding. Um, I, th I feel like that I've mentioned this a few times about Popperin. The the clay just, it's, with it being slow, it just doesn't expose his questionable movement as much as the, as the quicker surfaces do. Um, like grass, he's, he's never got to grips with grass at all. Too Too quick and too low bouncing for him. Um, but the clay stats, they definitely suggest that he's a very good value here to beat Diminor, who is very hit and miss on this surface. Um, Diminor is actually trying to win three straight matches at a main level clay court tournament for only the second time in his career. The only other time he's won three matches at a, a main level clay court tournament was in Barcelona in 2022. And one of those was a retirement. So there's nothing in the clay. Th these, these odds for me are just based on 
general form and general ability. They're not clay specific. And if you're looking at clay specific odds, then popular in his value here. Absolutely. So what are we going to do? Are we going to play him on the money line or are we going to take him on the spread? What's the, what's the, what's the best angle? It's like, well, I haven't seen the, the, the complete odds for this. I think he's going to be around about 3.3-ish um, popular in as, as far as I can gather. On the money um, line, he's plus 250. So, yeah, around, I, oh, yeah, plus 230, sorry. Plus three, yeah, you're correct. Two, three, around about 3.3 plus 230. Yeah, either take that or or the plus games. You know, the guy's held 87% of the time in the last 12 months. Um, I'm not keen on handicaps on the clay often. It, it can go badly wrong. Um, I would just take Popperin. I think I'm going to take Popperin here. Just on these clay odds, I think that's the value of the day, in all honesty. Plus 230, Domino are trying to make win only three matches in a competitive tournament on clay for the second time in his long career. Uh, next match, uh, the man that everyone wants to see over here now, Yannick Sinner, the Australian Open champion, going to have a huge support with the Italian fans. He's on this unbelievable run, 19 wins this year and only one defeat which was against Carlos Alcaraz uh, in Indian Wells. He won in Miami. He won in um, he's won three tournaments in Miami. He won in the Australian Open. Where was the other tournament? He won, he won another tournament. I can't remember. Oh, it comes to me in a second. Uh, and he's up against Jan Leonard Struff, uh, the German. And Len Leonard, Jan Leonard Struff got to the quarterfinals here last year. And he also reached the final in Madrid on clay. But look at the odds here. You're talking about clay odds and, and overreactions. Janik Sinner, obviously, we're expecting a burnout at, a burnout at some stage. He's minus 1,400 to win this match. Uh, Jan Leonard Strip is plus 650. The spread is four and a half, and Sinner is a big favorite, minus two dollars, four and a half. You might even want to go up to five and a half with Bet Rivers. Uh, Strip is plus 150, receiving four and a half. And the total here, a very heavy favorite for the uh, over, uh, sorry, the under, and minus 162 at 20 and a half. Um, I mean, I'm sure that your database and I'm sure that your 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 stats on clay will make this another one that's a not closer game than the odds suggest here. The last time they did meet was uh, in Indian Wells this year and Sinna did win it 6-3, six, 6-4. Uh, six, but Struff has got some points to defend. He was a quarter finalist and heading into Madrid we got the final last year. Yeah, his numbers here are actually very, very good. Um Struff's record in Monte Carlo in terms of his service points, one in return points, one total. He's gone 105 uh, and his hold and break total is 106. So very, very respectable numbers. Problem is Sinners are, are, well, one of them's quite a lot better. His service points, one in return points, one total is 107 and his service hold and break total is a, a big 117. Um, but there's there's encouragement for, for Struff backers on those Monte Carlo stats they're very good you know you you would perhaps not have expected that on a slow very slow clay court in a Madrid you know you could sort of see it but it's, it's slightly unusual that he's doing um, quite so well in Monte Carlo the last 12 months clay stats at main level all tournaments Struff still got a very good record 71% win rate which is only 4% behind Sinner's 75% his service points winner in 10 points one total is 102 Sinner's on 110 and his service hold and break total is 106. Sinner's on 118. So you can understand why Sinner is a heavy favourite, but I think, you know, the odds are going a bit crazy on him now, aren't they? It's mm. it, it, it's difficult for, for, them, for, for me to understand why he's quite so short. I was expecting Corder to do something against him today, but Corder came out and did one of those Corder things where he dropped his serve and then kind of lost interest. His forearm was all leaky and he didn't fancy it after a while. But Struff's got a very good record against top 10 opponents, of not, not necessarily winning the matches, but at least testing them. He's played a tie-break in seven of his last nine matches against top 10 opponents, and he's won at least a set in five of his last nine matches against top 10 opponents. For me, this is all about how Struff serves. You know, he, he was set and 5-2 down, I think, to Bayers in his, in his first match because he served completely deserted him. Bayers was 100-1 to one on. Struff managed to turn it around. He managed to find his serve. Um... And eventually overpower Bayez, who, who I must admit did choke that one a little bit. So a little bit fortunate to be here, Struff, in, in a sense. But if he finds his serve and he looks to me like he's getting that confidence back that he had 12 months ago, he, he might be able to to press Sinner into the overs because these short prices on Sinner, they're giving us better lines on things like the overs, aren't they? I'm interested in tie break played here. I haven't seen the lines yet because it's not come out, but anything around about sort of six to four or, or maybe bigger. Um, on tiebreak played would would be of interest, bearing in mind how often Struff does tend to press these top guys very often, or set one overs, 
Um, those are the two markets that would interest me here, but I haven't seen the line, so it's difficult to to call it. Yeah, so we're going to go for Struff to make it competitive. Head across to the Bit Rivers website. The tie break in the match we're expecting to be around about plus one fifty, and if it is around that kind of price, that is the kind of price that we are very much interested in. Now, the final match uh, really does interest me because I think this offers the best bet of the day. Now, I don't know if you agree with me on this, but I think this offers the best bet of the day. It's Stefanos Sitsipas against uh, Alexander Zverev, uh, and it's both minus one ten. The two players are. You can't split them. Minus 110. Bet Rivers is saying, it's up to you, Mr. Calvert, Mr. Seeley. Who do you think will win? Because we don't know. Uh, if you look at the head-to-head between the two, it's overwhelmingly in favour of Sitsabas. 9-5 in his favour on clay. They've played five times. Sitsabas has won four of those five occasions. He played him in Monte Carlo in 2022. He won 6 4 6 2. Um, I've watched a lot of since the past this week, and I tell you what, the boy looks back to me. I, I thought he was exceptional today against Echeverry. I thought he was absolutely brilliant against uh, Laszlo Jerry before Jerry retired. And I think if you've got a rebase on one player this week, and that player is since the past. I've already, I've already looked, Sean, at him to win the French Open. Um, some books are 33 to 1. Now, this French Open is going to be wide open. Alcaraz obviously got an injury. We're not convinced about... Um, uh, Djokovic Nadal is four to one in the book. Uh, currently, with Bet Rivers, you can get twenty five to one. Stefano Tsitsipas. Uh, I think that would. I, I'll be. I'll, I'll be. I'll be heading to bet that twenty five to one because you've got Holger in them at eight to one. Zverev is fourteen to one. If he beats Zverev here and makes a statement, I think this is. Uh, now you could be. You could be saying, Nigel, what a load of rubbish. I totally disagree with whatever you just said because I don't know where you go on this game. But I think Tsitsipas has looked absolutely. Brilliant this week, and in a place he loves. Yeah, it's very for me. <laughs> Are you serious? No, I'm oh, not serious. I didn't know you. <laughs> I just thought I'd put that in and see what you did. Very good. I, I didn't know you'd be serious, but I, 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 I don't you think twenty five to one is a big price at the French Open? No, I, I hadn't thought about it until you until this second when he mentioned it. But I, I was hoping that he was going to be plus money for this for this game, um, this match against Zverev. It's a pass for sure. I said at the start of the tournament, you know, he, he's one of the ones that, well, he's a one that could be good value in the bottom half of the draw. So the odds weren't great, were they? I think it was 16 to 1 when we talked about it on, on Sunday, which I didn't feel was big enough. But, you know, no surprise that his, his, his form has returned, his, his kind of zest has returned, if you like, coming to a tournament that he's got such a great record in, you know, a couple of times uh, champion here. You know, the head to head on clay is, is quite overwhelming. Not staggeringly overwhelming, but substantially overwhelming. 4-1, as you said, to Sitsipas on the clay. Service points, one in return points, one total of 104 for Sitsipas, 96 for Zverev. Um, and even on the clay, Sitsipas has held serve 87% of the time against Zverev. And he's also won 10% more of the points on second serve. So it's been a matchup that Zverev has really struggled um, with, generally, as it happens, but certainly on the clay. Uh, I watched pretty much all of that Echeverry match. I mean, Echeverry was not good at all. It has to be said. Sitsipas donated his serve, didn't he, in the first game of the match. I don't think Echeverry won a, won a match, won a game after that, did he? Yeah, but I, I, I don't think, think he's really out. I, I know he played badly, but I think the level of Sitsipas was, you know, his shot making was better than what it was. It was for, 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 for this this season by far. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it was. It was great. I'm just making the point that Echeverry was was yeah. poor. He's certainly going to get a much more. Uh, stern opposition in 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 Zverev than he than he got in Echeverry. Again, if you look at the Monte Carlo records, Zverev is is decent, sixty seven percent win rate, um, service points one and return points one total of one hundred and five, and a service hold and break total of one hundred and eleven. So very respectable stats. But the pass is not even including today, so these will rise after that heavy win over Echeverry. He's on one hundred and ten and one hundred and sixteen in those numbers. So. It, it all kind of points to sit to pass. You know, he's he's much more effective on the clay than any other surface these days. You know, the slower, the better for him. His backhand can very much be rushed on the quicker surfaces. People have, have figured that out now for, for quite some time on the clay. He has that little bit of extra time. He can use his variety of spins, his variety of heights and depths. Plus, he's coming into the net a lot more now as well than he, than he was before sit to pass. So if he, if he keeps up the level that he's shown against in the in the matches against Echeverry and and um, and Jerry, then you would give him an outstanding chance of beating Zverev, yeah, for sure. So, are we going to have an official pick on this one at minus one ten, or are we going to 
hopefully get a little bit of a better price. You're not you're not really happy with I'm the price. You want plus I, money. I, yeah, I want plus money on it. Really, again, maybe I'm perhaps being greedy. I think Poppy is more value at, at, at the prices, but my 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 bet here, if I was betting in this match, would definitely be sit to pass. Yeah, maybe just wait for a little bit of plus money. Um, but I feel like Sitsa Pass has got a very good chance of not only winning this match, but going deep in this tournament again. I think he, I think he's the takeout. I really do. And I think the rebound, I think the French Open, 25 to 1 now with Bet Rivers. I strongly believe by the time the tournament comes, it'll be closer to half that, 14, 12 to 1. There's doubts around our crowds. Sinner will surely hit a brick wall at some stage in, in a major. Nadal, 5 to 1. What do we, how can we bet Nadal you at 5 to 1? You would want at least probably 50 to 1 on Nadal, yeah. wouldn't you? Holger Rune. That single figures, sits a pass, former finalist at Roland Garros, 25 to 1. That'll do for me. Come, coming back, you know. It's certainly value compared to what you've just said. If his very over is what, 12, 14? Yeah, it's half the, yeah, half the same price. Half, half, half the price of sits a pass, yeah. Yeah, on the clay statistics, you would certainly be looking at sits a pass if you, if you were having a bet in that market at the minute. Yeah, Nadal it doesn't seem likely at all, does it? Um, Alcaz, we don't know what's happening with him. Sinner, as you've said, uh, at some point, it feels like he'll have a letdown. It depends how well he manages his schedule. He might only play Madrid and Rome, and 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 that'll be that. We'll we'll sort of, sort of see what happens with him. But he's he's obviously a very very short price. Uh, Rune is an outrageously short price. So yeah, Medvedev is Medvedev is twelve uh, is eighteen to one with Bet Rivers, which is the top. You know, uh, same price as Sitsipas. I mean, uh, thirty three to one. Uh, sorry, twenty five to one Medvedev, twenty five to one. Sitsipas, the same price. You know, yeah, out of that lot, you would you would see Sitsipas as the value, yeah, based on the odds okay. that we just quoted, yeah. Well, I'm getting rather excited, rather ahead of myself with the talk of the French Open. That's for uh, later on in the year with the majors coming up. We've got you covered on that. But for the remainder of the week, uh, I'll be here in Monte Carlo. I'll be giving you all the bets, bets in play on all these matches on the Instagram account. Make sure you follow that app because we win on Instagram and our socials on Twitter at Instagram app because we win as well. Uh, give us a, a subscribe on our YouTube channel, a Betting Weekly Studios. Make sure you follow that. There'll be lots of great content coming your way. The Premier League returns this weekend and the Champions League. Uh, yesterday, we had two epic quarterfinals. We're doing the return legs that'll be live on Monday as well. As well as that, you can download the podcast, Betting Weekly Game Bet Match. Please keep those podcast downloads coming. And uh, if you've got any questions, obviously, like I say, we, we addressed the situation about losing bets at the beginning of the show. We spoke about how you should manage your bank balance. It's always very important to gamble responsibly. And if you've got any questions or any advice uh, on what you should do going forward for the rest of the year, please put it on the comments section below. And uh, myself or Sean or one of the team here, at because we were and we'll answer any questions you have. Uh, Sean, uh, i get back to the kids. Uh, hopefully you can have a nice... Uh, yeah. uh, hopefully things change through the weekend. Hopefully we can get on a bit of a winning run as well. Um, that's it for this week. Uh, we'll be back on Monday. Where are we heading Monday? Barcelona, is it? Barcelona? And Bucharest and somewhere else, which I've forgotten for the moment. All the bees. Uh where is it? Oh, Munich. Yeah, Munich. Oh, yeah, Munich. And we'll be back previewing all three of those matches in a bumper uh, game bet match on Sunday evening. Uh, Sean, thanks always for your time this week. Uh, good Thank luck you. with everything. Uh, good luck for everyone. And members, head across the Bet Rivers. Early start tomorrow at 5 a.m. for the last 16 matches. Placing the quarterfinals are up for grabs at the Monte Carlo Masters.